Another thing we were discussing earlier is, uh, uh, you know, how hard it is to get stuff out there, right? The biggest hurdle that anybody in the independence, whether it's music, video games, movies, the biggest thing out there is getting getting people to know about your stuff, right? Um, so we have a director here today who has a project uh, that's uh, on its way out. I think it's, it hasn't come out yet, but we'll ask it's him. It's tomorrow. It comes tomorrow. out tomorrow. That's what I was going to say. I know it's coming soon, but I couldn't remember the exact date. So with that, let's introduce our friend here at Midnight's Edge, Mr. Alejandro Montoya Marin. How are you doing, sir? How are you, Jans? Thank you so much for having me. Yes, we're glad to have you. We brought you in here today because you have a movie opening tomorrow. And, and like seems. any independent producer, you're very shy about your product and will not be talking about it. Uh, very much correct am i am I, <laughs> uh, I gotta do it you know the indies have to do the foot soldier work so i have to pretty much promote it and uh, as much as possible anybody promotes it's like it's part of the biz like <laughs> yeah. good to see you well the beauty of it is is i set you up for that so you can shill shill and shill away all you want for yeah. your film uh, and that's the beauty <laughs> of it is your film so it's I don't even know if you could technically call that shilling, I guess. Um, but uh welcome alejandro it's been a it's been a tick since we've seen you we got paulie in the chat get your butt in here uh, you set this up, my friend. Um, but yeah, set us up here. Tell us what this movie's about. We'll take a look at your trailer and then we'll talk about it. So uh, my movie's called Millennium Bugs and it's a Y2K comedy about two best friends kind of figuring out what the next stage in life is during the last week of 1999 and during the Y2K craze. And it's basically two All best right. friends uh, starring Michael Lovato and Katie Aaron. It's my technically my second feature film because the first feature film I did was for that Rebel Without a Crew show, right. uh, which I mean it doesn't I mean it counts but it doesn't because it was like done with like really different ways of doing movies. Like for those who may not know what Rebel Without a Crew is, why don't you really really quick give them an explanation? Yes, Rebel Without a Crew is a docu series based on Robert Rodriguez's book. Robert Rodriguez is the director who made El Mariachi, Sin City, literally probably the only Mexican American filmmaker who's been a, a successful director in the, in the box office um, with Sin City, Spy Kids, Planet Terror, a bunch of other movies. Yeah. He recently just did Alita and is talking about possibly doing Alita too. Anyway, the whole point is they did a docu-series where you shoot a movie the same way he shot El Mariachi, which is 7K, no crew, and 14 days to shoot. Only this time they had a camera crew following us. So you had to be good in front of the camera while you're doing a movie under the most difficult of situations. Yeah. So we did talk to you then uh, about your uh, project and now you have a new one out. So let's, uh, let's not waste any time. Let's take a look at a trailer for millennium bugs from Alejandro. Here we go. <laughs> Enough talk. What are you gonna do with that? Oh, get some booze! Yeah! You got mail. Man, what do you think you're doing? Due to lack of payment. You redneck. I was uncalled for. Sorry. Kelly Wynn. Cut to the chase. You're out of money. Oh, man. Hey, wake up. I need your help. What are you wearing? I have one for you, too. Yeah. Are we doing this or what? Doing what? Grab your keys, bitch. Stop! We're gonna commit any felonies tonight! We're gonna get caught! Because I messed up like that. Pretty good. <laughs> All right. So 
Uh, as we were saying before, actually, it kind of leads into the whole independent discussion, Alejandro. Why don't we start off with talking about just how difficult it can be to get to get your movie out there in the industry these days? I think it's extremely difficult, man. It's really funny that I just made a post about this. Like, I've heard almost every from meetings to investors to distributors to everyone they all have like a little list that if it's like it's not an ip it's not a sequel and it doesn't have stars don't dream that's literally what they tell you everyone does or they you know it's kind of like they're playing moneyball backwards and they're just like well we need to make a movie that talks about uh space and they need to have laser swords because star wars had that and they're huge in the box office and then what other movies uh right now um Wakanda forever. Cool. The lead dies. And now the sister go, like, they try to mimic things. And I'm like, well, that's, that's not what, you know, this isn't a, an equation, you know, this yeah. isn't an equation. And it's, it's not only as a, as an independent artist, I think the more, the one that everyone thinks is like the money, where do you get the money to make this happen? And sometimes you have to start from the lowest to the low, to the lowest of the low millennium bugs was um, we lost the funding and I had to crowdfund it. And we raised mm. the funds to crowd. Mm, interesting. Yeah, no, it's, um, I feel like the director's job is not to take no for an answer and to keep fighting until you finish the job. Right. Well, well naivety uh, is a very important feature of being an independent producer. Oops. Sorry? <laughs> naivety is a very important feature of being an independent producer. Producer or director? <laughs> Probably um, both. <laughs> well, it depends if you're wearing both hats. I mean, I guess so, but I mean, isn't night na na nativity? Sorry, I'm ESL. Na nativity, like the the best friend of uh of the dreamer or of the yeah. king and things. Yeah, you. That's that's my point. Yeah, exactly. You 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 don't always know what you don't always know. Yeah. I mean, I have a fairly long comedy career, and you, which you know nothing about, which I find offensive, <laughs> and um, uh. And, no, and I know your thing. website. Dude. I know your channel. Oh, thank you. I feel better now. Uh, <laughs> uh, the so the thing is, if you know, most of us in entertainment, if we knew what we know now, yeah. we'd probably never get into it. And but right. that's part of the fun. That's and and so what you've done is fantastic. I've got so many questions. I mean, here's my main question: is yeah. that Whenever I've done something independently, I've always made sure that the people involved were paid professionally, that no one was doing me favors, because that always can kill you down the road. Do you agree with that? Yeah, we did both. We, uh, I paid, but I also was like, I'm going to pay you, but also I need you to do me favors. <laughs> no, I, I know what you mean. I'm being, I was a bit hard assed on that. Of course, you're, you know, but there's certain people you can ask favors of and certain people you shouldn't be asking favors of. So, so how, tell me about that. Well, I think it's um, this, this movie particularly had a rough upbringing because when we finished shooting the movie, we were going to screen, we had a nineties bar in Austin. We were going to screen at South by nice. We had people, fl we were going to fly. It was going to be the whole thing. And then we pulled out like three days before, cause then it was the pandemic. Oh. So we had to regroup and we were all like, I mean, we just finished editing the movie. It's been a year. Um, now we're not going to be able to promote it. Oh. So then oh. I had to like kind of do the whole like film festival remotely thing. And that turned out to be harder than expected because no one wants no one wants to spend money on a movie if it doesn't have well comic books or whatever. And it just it was very hard to like, hey, man, if you could tune in and check out this 1999 movie. Uh, movie set in 1999 it's only 10 bucks you know you try to give them like any deal any approach any to so the audience member can come in and because of course like i'm competing like just tomorrow i'm competing with two dc comic book movies uh, uh the, the the animation ones i'm competing with a man named otto uh with tom hanks the whitney houston movie vhs part four or five and there's a bunch so Thank you so much, you guys, for letting me come and talk about and promote our our indie flick, uh, Millennium Bucks. I appreciate I, it. 
I actually well, have a question about it uh, too, real quick, because what I think is fascinating about it is that it's a period piece uh, because it's Millennium Bug, so it takes place in 1999. And period uh, pieces, of course, depending on exactly which period one is talking about, tends to be rather pricey. Now, from 2020, 20, or you filmed this in 2019? 20. Twenty. Like, okay, yeah. Okay. So from the yeah, so basically, uh, twenty twenty years. Like, it hasn't happened, honestly, that much in like fashion and stuff like that from two thousand twenty to two thousand. But uh, but what were the uh, what were the challenges you faced in making a period piece set in nineteen ninety nine? Like, was that yeah. extra challenging? What anachronisms did you have to avoid? Yeah, and exactly. stuff like that. Well, first, Andre, first of all, thank you for having me, Tom, Chris, everyone in the panel. Thank you so much, Polly. There's my boy. Uh, basically, almost everything, because we we had to we had like five cars on standby. So wherever we shot and we saw like a brand new car, we're just, just bring the Suburban, block it over there. We would move cars. <laughs> Every, you're going to if you see the movie, you'll see a, a Suburban quite a bit. <laughs> in the no, and that's kind of I'm glad you brought that up because that's something we kind of bring up a lot. Yeah. As far as like in, in, you know, the big studios that you saw, oh, well, hell with it. We'll just fix it in post. Well, that's something that would cost, you know, a couple thousand dollars to hire an animator, go in and do, and it's, you know, nothing to them, but to you guys, that's a big deal. So you have to have that car there to be able to do that. So yeah, I can see, uh, but to do, to do it more practical is, I think it helps in the end of the day. So, so how, yeah, how did you, uh, how did you cast this? Cause the cast is great. Thank you. I, I honestly, I, I mean, just a traditional route. I, I contacted actors that I thought would be good for the role and they did auditions. And then once I felt like, oh, I really, I really like what they're bringing into the character, I would try to like go out with them, have a beer and just like see who they are as a person. And, and if you're going to be fed up with me, because I constantly talk and I'm very energetic, maybe this <laughs> is going to work out. <laughs> so just try to meet them. And, 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 and then from there, we did that. And obviously, you know, you promise the actors that, you know, hey, you're you're going to waste your time on this movie. It's I'm going to work my ass off for you and yeah, make this movie doable because I don't want to waste your time. And 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 so your lead female, I can't I don't know her name, has hey, a Aaron. super uh, Melanie Griffith quality. Was was that what you were looking for? Like from something wild? Dude, that is amazing because that is one of my favorite movies. And yes, that is a very huge inspiration. I love uh, I love that movie. I love uh, it's a brilliant movie. Great movie. Great movie. I mean, there seems to be a lot of that in this movie. I there is. I I feel like the 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 most important thing is I wanted to do a friendship. I wanted to make the movie because after we finished it and I tried selling it, people would uh, people trying to buy it would go like, well, they don't end up together. And I'm like, that's not the point of the movie. The point of the movie is that what she lacks, he has, and vice versa. Well, they do end up at together. They drive off. As friends, of course, as friends. They wanted them to hook up, and I was like, well, she's gay, so I don't know what I mean. Yeah, I can. What matters is friendship, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. No, no. I, and uh, I, I, Yeah, to me, that didn't matter. And yeah, well, so that was that was my main goal. How do I make something that's enjoyable, that means something that people can re resonate to? And then I had never heard of a Y2K movie, so I feel like, hey, we could we can stretch our bucks more with cars and fashion. And the one thing I did fight till death was that soundtrack. Every song there is part of a nineties album. And we have music from music that you've seen in empire records, mall rats, big movies. Was that probably the most expensive part of the film? Probably I'd imagine I was waiting yeah. for that. Yeah. So how, yeah. so, so what kind of financial issues did you run into there? Um, we had bigger bands, or well, I mean, we have magnetic fields. We have really good bands, but we had other big bands that when the film festival route was over, they wanted to like, well, if you want this in your movie, it's going to cost you like 30K. And I'm like, no way. <laughs> like, we don't yeah. have it. You can say 29K. We don't have it. Yeah. For like, for example, for those out there who might be wondering why, the, the, just that's the way it is. Like the movie Clerks, for instance, costs 30K to make. They spent three or four times that on the soundtrack when they bought it. Mm -hmm. uh, so all those songs were added after the fact for the most part, outside of like two of the songs that were in the movie. Yeah. And they spent ungodly amounts just to, to do that. So yeah, that, that's one of those things. It's kind of out of touch or out of reach, I should say, for 
for an independent. Well, if, if uh, you're trying to get, you're trying to get, you were trying to get the original tracks, right? Right. Yeah. That's another thing too. You yeah, can always so, try to get an alternate track, right, Paul? Well, we. I mean, not that we want to get into this discussion, but there was a band in Toronto, I won't name them, uh, who could basically imitate every single band out there. So we hired them to duplicate the Stones, everything, and the cost of music plummets if it's someone else doing the tracks. That's a hint for all you independent producers out there. Well, and by the way, that 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 trick, the sound alike band yeah. is used by like Michael Bay. He never he'll use music from the Rolling Stones in his movie, but he hires another band to perform it. Right. You, you pay for the 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 sort of you pay for the you know the Rolling Stones because they wrote it, but you pay the performance to a different band, a, a sound right. alike. It's it's a great trick to use to get big music in your movie. Yeah. So Chris, you have great hair this morning. And, yeah. and, and oh, the look, I didn't know I was on camera. Who was, the, who was the DOP on your phone? <laughs> I didn't know he was on camera. I love it. The uh, director direct of photography. Uh... Yeah, my director of photography is Ryan Halsey, who um, I went to a film school with, and he also was my plus one in uh, Rebel Without a Crew. They were they allowed you to bring one person. So he did my my lighting and my sound. Yeah, he's it's, the film looks great. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Thank you. No, I, no. I, I look that that's the one thing that indie films, I, it gets me in the back of the throat when I go, okay, that's an indie film. And then it's hard to watch. <laughs> well, the beauty is Paul now is a lot of the indie films are using the same kind of cameras that the, the studio guys are. Cause you they're all the same. You have to know cameras. how to color grade. And well, yeah, you have to have a DOP there. and all that stuff too. But I wanted to ask uh, Alejandro a specific question here uh, that was brought up earlier. Sorry, because you brought up nowadays that nobody wants to see or nobody in the studios wants to see your script or hear about your pitch unless it's a IP or something like that. Does it does it warm you a bit to see movies like Megan and like this recent weekend knock at the cabin do well that aren't necessarily attached to some IP? I think we talked about this like a couple of months ago, and there is an air right now in meetings and production um, like production meetings and greetings with companies and pitches like there is an air that they they're kind of saying okay it's time for new voices it's time for we should bring more original ips obviously i'm saying that and it doesn't reflect but it's because it usually takes a year to right. get trip right to shoot it to edit it it takes a while but i'm i can sense that in the meetings and um um it does it, it makes me really happy with movies like everything everywhere at once and tar i mean and even though they're indies but right. they're they're more in the independence and and then you start hearing how um other projects they struggle so much to get like the attention to like oh well they didn't put enough marketing it's i think it's as a film lover uh as a, i love film i love watching movies and 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 I want to make a movie that I think I would see and I would enjoy. So that's always what I'm trying to do. And there's so many people right now trying to do serious things and trying to, I just wanted to make a fun movie that people can like talk about later and say, you know what? That was worth it, man. That was fun. Let me tell a friend. Absolutely. So you said you had to go to a uh, crowdfunding for this film eventually. How, how did that come about? Oh my God. It was the worst. It was like the, <laughs> it was the worst. Indiegogo, I, uh, where'd, where'd you, where'd you I was go? Gonna say, do you have any, uh, like, uh, uh, rec like, like recommendations for anybody who might, might want to do this or things that to, to look out for, to avoid uh, that you may have learned from your experience? Oh, of course. I can give you so many tips real quick, just so you can see for tuning in, I'm going to give you tips. One, have a lot of content Two, patience. Three, you're going to start getting calluses on your fingers from all the texting because people will say, <laughs> hey, man, I'll help you out. I promise. And then <clears throat> you don't hear from them. And then you have to message back and you have to remind them and you're competing against you have, you're, you're spreading people away from their money. And that's very important. You're taking away bread from them and they have to, you have to pitch to them. This is going to be worth your money. So you have to be prepared and you can't just shoot a video like this. Hey man, I'm Alejandro and you should invest hundred K in my movie. Why what? the fuck should they? What, what were your perks? Oh, I gave them T-shirts and the typical ones, but I think my biggest perk was like, I'm going to get this movie made. Because <laughs> I've heard so many people that never yes. get it done. Yep. 
Yeah, and I've, I've, I've put money into two projects that never got done. So congratulations, seriously, congrats, congratulations. You know, on that on that note, uh, I've seen Alejandro's two of his his features now and two of his short films, and it's great to see the the progress and uh, the journey of a of a of an indie filmmaker. And uh, we absolutely loved uh, the wrong guy that that was out a couple months ago. That was hilarious, and I'd seen this one a few years ago. <clears throat> so it's great to see it get get released uh how just for the you know uh, let's say someone gets their their film done <clears throat> how difficult how many hoops did you have to get go through to be to, for it to be released on itunes That's a good so question, many man. so many so here uh, so, so for tips for in indiegogo is always have content always be super informative always see that you're don't just um Oh, there's the campaign. I'll come back in two weeks. No, there's the campaign. Now go text for eight hours. Now figure out a car wash, figure out a concert, figure out a screening, other ways to make money. Now for the Indiegogo, it was very hard, man, because um, they will always lowball you. Eh, nobody wants this. And maybe you don't need the soundtrack. Uh, magnetic fields, archers of loaf. Who are they? And you're like, excuse me, like <laughs> they're pretty big bands. <laughs> so they kind of like uh, we had this 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 discussion because um, the band Please is in the Empire Records album. They used to open for Radiohead, and I told them, and I would sell to the to the to the to all the distribution people that we spoke to, and then finally landed on Indican. I was like, if if this is an indie film, if we're going to sell the nostalgia and we're going to sell them the 90s right, the soundtrack has to be perfect because then they'll forgive. And every and, and thanks to a year, we had to negotiate for a year because then wow. they would call us and be like, well, you know, if you can't, if you don't have it, uh, let me get back to you. And then that turns to months, that turns to weeks. You would have to call them back. Then they don't respond. Then should I respond? If I text them too much, they're gonna think I'm 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 being pushy. And then you call them, and then they give you it's it's a whole process. Also, a lot we had to do a lot to get it to get it up here. <laughs> but in no way do I want I want to sound like I'm grateful that it's here, because that was my goal. Like to everyone that donated to the campaign, I was like, oh, my my main goal is to you don't you donate it to the right horse. I will finish. I will see this through. Alejandro, hey, it's Chris Gore from Film Threat. First of all, big fan, sir. Okay, congratulations, dude. Uh, congratulations on the film. Uh, your films have gotten, I think all your films have gotten great reviews on Film Threat. Um, I'm super Thanks. excited that you're here. I know you're eligible for our award show, Award This. Um, I have some questions. So a couple things. Um, you know, uh, I've done also a crowdfunding campaign what are some of the challenges? I have two questions, actually. My first one is the challenges of a crowdfunding campaign. Um, my film I just announced yesterday is going to be released in April. Uh, you know, Attack of the Dock. So it's finally Attack coming out. Attack of the Dock. Yes, I donated. Yes. Heck yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's coming out. And we're doing a, a premiere at the Frida Cinema in, in Santa Ana, California. It's going to be a lot of fun. What are some of the challenges? Because I know, dude, when you were just talking about your, your crowdfunding campaign, I've been there. It is a 24 seven job for a month. It is not easy. And then that I, I have carried since I, I've only done two successful Kickstarters. One was to bring back film threat, which I did. And the second one was to make this movie, which I've done, but boy, dude, the in between it is. So, I mean, I can't go a day without someone asking me. So when's the movie coming out? Do you get that kind of thing? And also what were some of the challenges of, um, of, you know, doing a crowdfund, a successful, crowdfund well jesus of course potential spam i apologize y'all <laughs> ask him um, for money I guess. Yeah. it goes what comes around goes around <laughs> yeah yeah um challenges man um i know i well i like being very upfront man i don't like i don't like bullshitting so i immediately started with the 50 50 55k um crowd amount which is it hasn't it hadn't been done in new mexico new mexico uh is growing a lot and 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 it's and it's been being pushed a lot by by film so 
I had to, I, sh I think I shot for the, you know, like I aimed for as high as possible because I didn't think we were going to race 25 because I had seen locals do more of them, uh, more crowdfundings and that they weren't successful. But I feel that a lot of it had to do with persistence and marketing, a hundred percent. And I still get people asking me, when's the movie come out? Literally two days ago. So I texted them like, it comes out this Tuesday, motherfucker. Right. Well, and persistence has got to be something that's probably heavy in your vocabulary or something you got to remind people of constantly in the indie world. Cause I I've worked on indie films before. Nothing kills an indie movie faster than, you know, th three or four cast members who don't show up, you know, that that's your worst nightmare. And, and that's, you know, kind of what we, we were discussing earlier, I think was like Paul brought up too, is, you know, you want to pay your actors and stuff up front. You don't want to deal with this. You're doing me a favor or work with friends shit. Cause then that's what you deal with is, all of a sudden you don't have your lead or you don't have your second lead. And what do you do? I mean, and, and I, I imagine that's gotta be something you've dealt with in the past. So how have you circumvented that and gotten yourself to this point and, and work, worked all those kinks out as far as like acting or losing a crew or what have you, as far as like wor working with friends versus working with people who you actually pay basically. Well, Oh man. I mean, I, I try not to be a dick. I try to be efficient with my time and sometimes my word and my tone sounds a little bit too stern, but it's all in good, it's all in good uh, intentions because I don't want to waste your time. I think as a director, you, um, they're there for you and nobody believes in this project more than you. Some people, they don't have a dream like you. It's, this is just a job. So you have to navigate the being polite and being grateful and being knowledgeable and being, you're there to cheer people up. I mean, at the end of the day, you're making a movie, man. You just, I decided not to stay, uh, and, and work on my dad's company or do whatever because I wanted to do film. So, yeah, it's always going to be stressful. And it doesn't matter whether, whether it's a 7K feature or 50K or 300K. It's There's always problems. So the quicker I think you can like, all right, let's figure it out, knowing that time is of an essence. But there's no need of putting heavier rocks on you if you still haven't finished the project or you haven't resolved it. So I think being more patient, it's taught me a lot of patience and to uh, collaborate more. I, I found this Paul here. I found that doing a crowdfunding, we spent probably as much time doing that, figuring it out, executing it as doing the goddamn project. It was exhausting. Probably more. I'd imagine in some I mean, cases. I mean, and then you make the mistake of over promising just your perks. I mean, we, like we made the goddamn Mr. Canoe head, got it done in China, had that had to do, got that shipped out. I mean, holy Jesus. Then some, I mean, you got to be really careful with the perks, not the, but uh, getting back to you, because you're, you're the guy, you're the guy for the moment. Uh, what was your shoot schedule? And uh, I mean, I just took a look at your Indiegogo. You raised more than $55,000 and you probably needed a few more dollars after that. I'm fairly certain. A lot more. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it's a good start. And yeah. um, uh, uh, so uh, what, what, what was your shoot schedule? How many days did you shoot it in? Oh, my God. We shot it in 14 days, and it was six-day weeks. And that was brutal, man. Brutal, brutal. And there were mostly night shoots. Because oh uh, we have to, you know, you, you want to try to use the location when they're not working because then you don't have to pay them and you don't have to pay employees. And then, you know, sound is not an issue. So, you know, you sometimes have to interrupt cuts because, oh, someone dropped the dishes. All right. That was the monologue. Let's go again. And right. so we, I decided to just do it night. And also because of the theme and and the, uh, the the issues of like her alcoholism, usually alcoholics usually go out more at nights. Not all of them, but you know what I'm saying. One, one, one quick nerd question. I, I can, uh, I can confirm year. that as a recovering alcoholic, <laughs> eight years sober. Um, I'm, I stay home at night. <laughs> that, that, that's his solution. He, he, Paul, Paulie does not uh, frequent any of his old friends because they'll just get him back into it. Right. That's the first thing you do. You got to say goodbye to them old friends, dog. That's it. <laughs> so, just the nerd question: Were you using like uh, Sony, Ari? I mean, what uh, what was your gear level, or was it thirty? Was it uh, you know? Um... I think it was the red. I forgot. The what red. You went red. Okay. Okay. Oh, we did shoot. Uh, we shot Atlas lenses. There's these uh these wide uh, wide angle anamorphic uh, anamorphic to make it look more 90s and then 
uh, yeah, we adapted the red to the Atlas lenses, which are beautiful. And I, I like the way it looks. I mean, maybe I'm a yeah. little biased. This is my movie. <laughs> no, I, I think you uh, overperformed on the look look side. That was all right. Ryan Halsey. Can I, uh, uh, first of all, offer a comment and, and a, a question, but Alejandro, just congratulations because doing a successful crowdfund, that's a challenge. Doing a movie and finishing it, that's a challenge. I, I, uh, I contribute to a lot of crowdfund campaigns. And uh, when it comes to a movie, I'm like, let me know when it's done. Don't worry about it. I also contribute to a lot of indie comics, but a suggestion for the, I'm going to put myself on camera for just a minute um, to show my suggestion is on a perk Try to do as many digital perks as possible, but do if you're going to do a physical perk, Sick. do patches, something like a patch. Because one, Orale. I think he's going to go grab his patch. Oh yeah, they're they're cheap, Orale. right? Patches Orale. are cheap to do. You yeah. can fit them in an envelope, so it costs you one stamp. Yeah, there you go. Patches, <laughs> two patches. I did Attack of the Dock official crew patches. They cost like a buck. You throw them in an envelope, and it's a great. That is a great. Perfect. Oh, that's cool. And that's really oh. cool design. Yeah, yeah. I'm still waiting for mine. This one, too. Wait, I'll give you. What do you mean? Did you get me? I gave you like a hundred dollars yesterday. All right, all right. That's cool. <laughs> no, Anyways, no, all right. No, no, I'm gonna go back to I'm gonna go back to my normal cartoon animated self here. But um, but my other question is so that's just for the indie filmmakers listening. Do something as simple as a patch or a sticker, t-shirts and, and DVDs and whatnot are, are uh, expensive to ship. Terrible. Out. Yeah, it's, it's dude, it's a nightmare, and and shipping is very expensive these days. Shipping that we you know estimated three years ago is different than it is now. But Alejandro, on the distribution, this is a key thing. Um, in addition to fundraising, it's the other big question. How did you get the distribution deal? IndieCan is a big, um, is is one of the larger um, indie distributors. Um, can, do you mind telling us not necessarily the direct financials, but some of some of the parts of the deal or things that indie filmmakers should look out, look out for? Because it's the one thing I always believe indie filmmakers deserve to get paid as much as possible. So it's not even always about the money, but it's also about what the distributor is going to do for you. Are they going to promote it? Are they going to get you on shows? Are they going to get the film reviewed by prominent critics? Are they going to get you a Rotten Tomatoes uh, listing? Like, what is the distributor doing for you that you couldn't do yourself? Um, I want to hear all of that. Well, it's funny you should mention about Rotten Tomatoes. We need one more to get the official thingy. We have oh, five. No. We need oh, one no. more. Oh, no. <laughs> but no, I mean, I think... I think you're better off with more people than with none because if I don't have that relationship or that company helping me out, I'm only going to be promoting to my same circle. Now, you know, of course, that there's things to that you should look out and and check, like the duration of what the contract is and 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 what will you do? What will they do for marketing? Marketing is a big deal, and I studied that before film in Mexico, so. Uh, couple of things that I've learned from my, my, my degree have helped out in, in constant, you know, constant media, constant, this, how to get, get bigger zings or, or, or an image that stays, what colors, etc. cetera. It, it, it does help. But ultimately I think you're just, um, Indican has been very supportive. There were other companies that were like, it was ridiculous. Either they wanted very little money or they're like, man, this isn't going to work. Or, well, why don't you change it? A lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that I was just, it didn't feel like they trusted in the film. And that's what I think uh, we you need. You need a distributor that trusts in the filmmaker and in the film, more importantly, because a lot of distributors, they just wait to get a pan of a bunch of movies and they go, there you go, Netflix. Yeah, and that'll, that'll be the last thing. I was very adamant about having and keeping the soundtrack and Indigen was very supportive and uh, the some of the minimum guarantee went to that so we can keep that soundtrack to the T. So trusting a uh, distributor and, you know, if you want to be a filmmaker, you're going to have to get used to no's a lot of them. So if one says no, Hey, you know what? Thank you. Don't take it personal. It's taken me a lot of time to not take it personal because I live for my movies, but other people are not like that. So if they say no, cool, go to the next one. And then maybe that one and then the next one and so on and so forth. And if all of those say no, 
then you get an aggregator and you upload it to yourself. You upload it yourself. It's all everything can be done. I people tell me not to yeah. do short and I still do them. Well, yeah, the, the aggregator though, doing it yourself can be a little pricey depending on how many platforms you want to be on. I think you definitely want to find your audience. And also, congratulations. I didn't know that you did that Rebel Without a Crew show. I love Robert Rodriguez. That book, that book is so inspiring. And um, I actually saw uh, El Mariachi back at Sundance in the in the late 90s. What an inspiration. I've actually Hell been to yes. his I've been to his studio in Austin, Texas. It's just outside of Austin. He he converted the old airport and I happened to get a tour of it. Um, uh, long story, but like it, he, that guy is a machine. He's an inspiration. Um, he's, I mean, look, you can, you can, I mean, you know, uh, there's so much to say about Robert Rodriguez just as like a force of nature as a filmmaker. And I'm just so glad that you, uh, you know, I assume you got to meet him and, you know, uh, be a part of his world. Oh so yeah. Can you, tell no. us, can you tell us about him and, and what it was like to meet him and, and hang out? Well, first of all, I was like blown away, right? Because when you were watching Mariachi at Sundance, I was washing my dad's car so I can pay it on pay-per-view. <laughs> so I, I would owe my dad would give me <laughs> five bucks. <laughs> and with those five bucks, I was able to like pay the pay-per-view, which was three ninety-five. And then the remainder dollar twenty-five, I would get a soda and a, a bag of Doritos. And that was my that was my Saturday afternoon. So it was always but, it was uh, great to see him. Um, oh, that's great. He's very supportive. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. So. He's very supportive. He's very uh like you said, Chris, he's a machine. He's he's in it. He's film and and he has people around them because as he's walking down to his office, he stops at that office. He checks the visual effects for Alita. He comes over here. He checks the numbers from El Rey Network. He says hi to his people. He says hi to his kids. He goes back to his office because he has to do rewrites. They bring him out to do the reshoot at, in the studio. It's He's constantly working. Um, yeah, and he's... He's great. He has this philosophy too. He likes to make movies with his family, right? So he has integrated his family life into his work life and filmmaking. Um, and uh, I, I just, I love that idea that strong family base, but applying that to also his career. So uh, something I think to be admired and, and replicated in your own life, if that's possible. I, you know, it's funny you say that. I try to do that. I I feel that people see movies as like part of memories. And I feel that making these movies are my memories because I don't have kids. I, I, uh, this is my life. This is going to be my life. Like when I was a kid, I knew like what I wanted to do is I should leave a row of projects that I directed. That's it. So I take it seriously and I take it, um, you know, I invest all this time and so does he, man. He bleeds for his movies and he loves his audience. And he always, anytime the cameras wouldn't roll and he would be bored, you could shoot the shit with him with movies like, oh, what nice watch. What's that? Oh, dude, it's the counter from Predator. I'm like, no way. So it's the little numbers where he's laughing like, oh, ha, ha, ha. he's got a big old watch. And he has so much memorabilia around his house, around his house and office, not just his, mind you. Because you'd be like, yeah, of course, I would. He would put all mariachi shit. No, not just that. Like he has stuff from Near Dark. He has stuff from um, uh, the, the Aliens. He has, you know, stuff that he just loves. Film like Predator or Die Hard, Aliens, a bunch of shit. So he's a guy who loves film, respects his audience, and wants to give the audience like a great time in the movie. So yeah, he's he's a lover of cinema. Great guy. That's great. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, so, Pauly, uh, since you set this up, did you have any specific questions for Alejandro? Uh, no, no. I, you, I mean, I wanted you guys to really interact, and um, um, especially Chato and Gore. Was there anything maybe that we didn't cover yet that you think maybe we should? No, you did a fantastic job. Uh, you know, I would just say it's, uh, what, a couple bucks to rent when it comes out tomorrow? Uh, ¿Qué más? Quanto, quanto es? How much is it? 
The movie is available for nine ninety nine. So one okay. copy is nineteen ninety nine. Okay. So I already got my pre pre sale. I did that. That's on Apple TV. Yes, sir. And um, I, you could get it on YouTube and on on Spectrum and, and stuff like that. But I I'm, but, I'm only promoting that. I, I have I do. But I, I you not thought so of the, the to be root. Yes, the distribution company is waiting for this, and then there's going to be nice another process. Yeah, nice. So Perfect. really quick, good, guys, good. Put, putting on my my slant hat, and then the part of the fandom hat is that, you know, uh, this guy and the shit he's got had to, had to deal with with Hollywood, telling his shit is not is to, is not Mexican enough. Uh, he, you know, Alejandro's a huge DC fan. Uh, you know, he, you know, he's he's the real deal, and. Uh, and the these type of directors are so rare uh from where the slants point of view that uh it, it's 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 nice to see uh see this happening and uh and congratulations man I mean, so I so is this film being pillared for not being mexican enough i had a i won't get into too many details but i that was that was a comment from someone when i pitched it to a you know, oh, you wow. know we to have a, the yeah. same problem here in canada where I'll pitch something and they'll go, it's not Canadian enough. I'm fucking Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> well, and then Chato, we had talked about, we had talked about like, and Tom, just, just this, this strange lack of a uh, vision from Hollywood in regards to, you know, the, the huge over 60 million people uh, uh, who happen to be Latino in the U S the underrepresented. Uh, you talk about a true underrepresented, you know, but there's that, and then just the way Alejandro presents his stories. It's not uh, you know just what? like this Mexican I was, thing. I, I was so just that's all I that. wanted to say. Uh, but putting my uh, former executive hat on, if you came into my office, I love your energy. Thank you, uh, sir. I can't guarantee I would go with the project, but I can see your passion. You are exactly the kind of person I would want to talk to. I, I absolutely uh, think you come off brilliantly in in just in what i've seen right now and uh it would be great to take a pitch from you i, I anyone who turns you down is an idiot i really appreciate that man you guys have made it easy with this conversation i mean i look at all your your, your guys's contents oh. and I tune in here from time to time so it was i'm really happy that you guys uh well first of all give me the opportunity to come and pitch my indie movie to people but also like wanted to have a conversation guys thank you no, your heart. I, I can tell your vibe. Uh, you've got a career. Well, and I can see what Paul's saying too, because like the the hardest part of this whole thing, and I said like coming from from anybody who's ever tried to do any of this kind of thing, is just to get your foot in any door, oh. right? And and to get your foot in any door takes some kind of panache or some kind of, you know, uh, you know, you have to have something to hook them in. And Paul's right. Like you have to have that jelly to get people to listen to you, whether they say yes to your project or not just getting their ear or getting them to listen to you is a, is a challenge in and of itself. I'd imagine. Yeah, it is. And thanks to people like you, you're letting me talk to people that are watching right now. And hopefully they would consider traveling back to 1999 with our movie. There well, it's, it's, it's part of your journey. And like I say about small business, because I have most experience in small business, say an entrepreneur, which is what, who you are is someone who is absolutely certain of success, but completely shocked when it happens. <laughs> That's a great line because yeah, I, I think as a director, you could a director is always fighting for that light that they only they only they see when they close their eyes. You know, you could yep. see the, the not the manifestation, but everything putting together, and that's when you're like, yeah, I want to make this movie because you can see, hopefully, that it'll turn out like that, and hopefully, people can see what you see. Oh, I have one more question. Yeah. I have so many questions. Go ahead. Sorry, by the way. Of um, course. So. so uh, you, I mean, as a director, you dream about the shots and your film and the stuff that you're doing. How close was the final product to how you initially envisioned it? Like 60%. Nice. Yeah. Um, as a filmmaker and especially as an indie filmmaker, uh, right now I'm actually in pre-production for my third feature film. And the way you see things when you're writing to how it eventually comes out is sometimes not the same, but as long as you keep those rhythms and the intentions of the scene, like what is this scene about? What is this character and this character trying to do in this scene? And you move the shots around to 
portray or convey the same message, I think you're good. So always adapting to change, I think, is the the the, the prime thing. So about sixty percent for but sure. That's the most fun is adapting at the moment. And did you edit it? I co no, it was more my it was David David Ferry. He I'm always there. David sure. Ferry's the editor, but I'm always there with the editor because I I as I'm writing, I already have sound effects in mind. And I already know how it's going to, uh, oh, throw the cigarette. And then shot, push in. Like, I already know how we're going to. Yeah, the, the old lady with the uh, uh, fork, the. Uh, the tongs? The tong, the yeah, tong wars. That, I, that, that was all me. I was just like, guy, they were like, guys, that's a little cartoonish. I'm like, it's funny. Just go with it. So yeah, so I don't uh, I don't want to feel like we're pushing on too long. You're more than welcome to stick around, Alejandro. We have uh, some other topics we do have to cover this morning, but uh, I want to remind everybody to check out your film tomorrow when it comes out. Of course, the name again is Millennium Bugs. Um, it's on your other side. There you go. <laughs> so check that out tomorrow on uh, Apple TV, you said, right? Yes, sir, on iTunes tomorrow. On IT, yeah. iTunes. Right. Um, you know, we Alejandro, do have... what you need to say is, I'd like to stay, but I, I'm going to be on Good Morning America in five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you got to get into hair and makeup. No, um, we, we have one here that you may be able to help answer for uh, from STR Red Wolf, though, who says, Hail all, Chris. Where did you get the patches designed and made? Sounds like I need to make them for uh, for my novels. I got T-shirts, stickers, et cetera, via Redbubble. So, yeah, Chris, uh, Alejandro, any uh, suggestions on outlets to, to get things like this made? Uh, Chris, go ahead first since it was specifically for oh. you. I, I had them made in China. I literally just Googled, where can I get patches made? Um, and, and so you, because they ship over from, from China, they're inexpensive, but also they take longer. It's that, it's that, that triangle. And Alejandro, I know you know what I'm talking about. Good, fast, cheap. You can, get, you can only pick two. You can get it fast and cheap, but it may not be good. You can get it good and cheap, but it won't be fast. That is the challenge when you're you're you know juggling a budget. I tend to go with good and cheap, and then things just take longer. You know, as an indie filmmaker, things take a long time, especially when you're doing it. You don't have a big studio backing. You don't have like an uh, deep pockets. You've got the money that you raise from that from it, and also you know, for myself, like you know, my day job is film threat, so I'm not a full time filmmaker. Um, I hope to be one someday, but. But, um, you know, I have other obligations, so it, it just takes a little longer. And there's always curveballs. Um, I mean, I was just looking at Millennium Bug, the first review of it, I think, ran in 2020. And uh, it'll be featured on the front page of Film Threat tomorrow, the review, to help promote, to help promote the VOD release. Thank you, sir. Well, it's important that, you know, yeah, we, you know, it's just important that people know about that now it's available on demand. So, um, you know. Those early reviews help when you're doing festivals, but you know we'll rerun reviews to let people know that hey, you can finally buy it and see it. But yeah, just uh, hey, Google. Uh, I, I don't even know the name of the company. I, I can look it up. I can look it up. Maybe Alejandro has a an answer to that. I honestly, I didn't buy it. It was my producer, but we basically went through get it good and get it cheap. Like we could take time for it to get here. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. That is the best decision. Oh, yeah. signature. Yeah. Signaturepatches.com. Go to signaturepatches.com is the name of the company that I ordered them from. There you go, STR Red Wolf. And thank you for that, guys. Um, so let's grab a few more of these super chats here before we lose anybody else. Did you have to take off, uh, Alejandro? Yes, I have to go. To okay, so meeting. we'll let you go first. So um, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Uh, hopefully everybody can check out your film tomorrow. Anything else you want to plug on your way out the door? Um. Just check out our our push start account and follow me if you want on on Instagram. That's my num my name Alejandro Montoya. Gentlemen in the panel, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Uh, big fan, Chris, Tom, Andre, everyone, Chato, like everyone, Polly. Thank you so much for everything. You guys have been amazing. And if you guys get a chance to check out the movie, I hope you like it. 
Thank you. Thank you again, sir. Good seeing you again. Take care. Yeah, it's an awesome movie, so everyone do check it out. I forgot to put it in there, but it's it is hilarious and it's a really good period piece. It's kind of like the exactly the original movie that everyone needs when our all genre entertainment like Marvel, Star Wars is all going down the drain. Then you need to add some some originality into your uh, movie going. Uh, we got to get ourselves yeah, set up on Rotten habits, Tomatoes anyway. And- yeah, and this yeah. is one to check. That out. would be amazing. I, I yeah. didn't like how your main character could not defeat Darkseed, but that's an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why did you fire Henry Cavill? What the fuck? Yeah, that's- yeah, that's what I want to know, Alejandro. I didn't. I wouldn't have, gentlemen. Thank no, you. No, so we know. We love you, brother. Take care. Take care. Have a great day, guys. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Later. So check out his film, Pleasure. everybody. Uh, and let's see what we got going on here, because we're going to be losing Chris and every, and uh, I think Paul here before too long. Yeah. And I think uh, culture as well. So before you know fun. it. We got to uh, do that more often. He we try. Great. We do try. Um, yeah.